Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, if you go back and you take a look at what we've been talking about the last couple of months, the two most frequent topics have been, of course, ATF's pistol brace rule and then all the craziness going on in here in Washington State, in particular, Washington's proposed assault weapon ban. Well, today, and I'm not really excited about it, but this is a super good question, so it needs to be answered. We're going to actually have to deal with the intersection of House Bill 1240, Washington's proposed assault weapon ban, and ATF's new rule on pistols with attached stabilizing braces. So I'm going to get one of the more frequent questions I've seen a lot answered today. So let's spend a few minutes and talk about how would Washington's assault weapon ban affect my amnesty registration? Okay, before we get going down the road, we are going down. Proud to announce that this video is being brought to you by Security Gun Club. That's right, Washington's nicest indoor facility is located right here in Woodenville, Washington. Now, I'm not going to brag about the people. They're still great. Not going to brag about the facility. It is still awesome. And I'm not going to brag about Jackson and all the awesome training they got going on over there. But what I am going to suggest is many of you right now might be in a state of, I don't know, panic buy. You may be really interested in loading up on semi-automatic rifles parts, components, or anything thereof. Well, why don't you stop by and visit my good friends at Security Gun Club right now because they got everything you need, whether it's uppers, lowers, parts, components, they got what you need and it's all from Arrow Precision. So not only will you be buying from my good friends at Security Gun Club, but you'll be helping out a local manufacturer, Arrow Precision, and their 800 plus jobs are all threatened by the passage of House Bill 1240. Many of you probably know this, but they are located right now, at least, in Lakewood, Washington. But here's the best part. If you go Go buy Security Gun Club right now and you say, hey, Bill sent me, guess what? You'll get an extra 5% off anything you buy from Arrow Precision. So for more information, visit them at securityguncloud.com. Yes, that is security with an E. That's securityguncloud.com. Okay, so here's what we're talking about today. We're talking about if you have a firearm that maybe you decided to do an amnesty registration on and it is now in the hopper or you're thinking about putting it in the hopper, if House Bill 1240 becomes law, does that totally screw you? And it's actually a really good question. And I got to tell you guys, I really do have the best viewers. And I want to tell you guys how flattered I am by some of the questions because I always joke around, but it's not really joking. We geek out together. And the intellect and the level of questions we're getting are really, really good. So you guys are all geeking out with me and I love it. Please keep doing it. Okay. Now, the source of our discussion today, the source of the materials, because we always do like to cite to our sources if we can, is in fact ATF Rule 2021R-08F. Also, ATF Rule 2021R-08F, the Frequently Asked Questions section, in particular question number 26, which I know some of you are going to bring up, so we might as well just head it off right now. And then, of course, finally, House Bill 1240 itself. Okay, just so you guys can visualize the scenario we're talking about. You have a firearm with an attached stabilizing brace. You thought it was an AR pistol. The birth certificate said it was an AR pistol. And that's what you went to bed one night believing you had. However, you woke up the next morning actually to find out that you were the adoptive parent of a federally regulated short barrel rifle. Then you're given a choice to either turn the firearm over to ATF or destroy it or reconfigure it or... If you want to keep it as is, that's fine. All you have to do is fill out a Form 1 under this amnesty period, throw it on in there, and let it become a federally regulated NFA item. Some of you have already thrown your hat into that ring. Some of you are thinking about it. What happens if you are in that position and your application is either already in or your Form 1 application is about to go in, and Jay Inslee signs 1240 into law. How screwed are you? The answer is probably not as screwed as you think. And here's why I say that. We're going to take a look first at House Bill 1240. Now, House Bill 1240, if it became law today, this is how the law would read. No person in this state may manufacture, import, distribute, sell, or offer for sale any assault weapon except as authorized in this section. What the law does not, however, say, and what the statute does not include is the word possess. 
Therefore, the possession of a firearm that would fall under this category is not unlawful, which means that you still have legal title to that firearm, which at one point was governed by a 4473, but will now be governed by a Form 1. If you register during the amnesty period and, the, and that application is approved, you will avoid the $200 tax stamp. Now, I know some of you are concerned about question and answer number 26 on the ATF's frequently asked question. And one of the reasons that it's confused is while well, it was written by the ATF. And then, of course, they seem to be changing it weekly. But the question read, if the state I reside in prohibits the ownership possession of a short barrel rifle, SBR, can I still register my firearm as an SBR? And, of course, the answer that the ATF gave was, ATF will not approve an application of an SBR that violates state laws. Now, let's just say, for the sake of arguendo here, that any firearm with an attached stabilizing brace that you're going to register also fa now falls under the definition of an assault weapon under the newly amended 941010 as passed by House Bill 1240. Here's the thing. It's still not unlawful for you to possess it. Therefore, when you commence that registration, if you've already done so, it was lawful. You were lawfully possessing it at the time you commence that registration. You will be lawfully possessing it when they approve that Form 1. If you're thinking about going for amnesty registration, then whether you do it now or you do it later, you will still be in lawful possession of that firearm. Why? Because there's a 4473 that absolutely establishes that you had that firearm prior to the enactment of the law. Any of you watching this video that have one of these firearms at this date are in lawful possession and will remain in lawful possession of that firearm. Therefore, they can be done through an Amnesty Form 1 registration. And then some of you are wondering, well, can I, in fact, after I get my Form 1 approved, will I be able to move that firearm into a gun trust. Now we've done a couple of videos, this one here and this one here, which talks about how now making your AR pistol, a federally regulated SBR, does allow the firearm to legally move into a gun trust. But some of you are wondering, well, okay, but if Inslee signs 1240 into legislation, can I transfer it into a trust? Well, if we go back and we take a look at what the proposed legislation reads, it makes it unlawful in this state to manufacture, import, distribute, sell, or offer for sale any assault weapon, except as authorized in this section. So in addition to the word possess not being in the statute, neither is the word transfer. And therefore, it is my opinion that if you get an approved Form 1 through your amnesty registration as an individual, you will still be allowed to utilize a Form 4 to transfer that into a gun trust. Now, that transfer will not be tax-free, but there will be no violation of Washington state law because you lawfully possessed that firearm or those firearms prior to the enactment of the law. Now, I know some of you are still saying, but what can I do to try to stop this law? Well, we need everyone's help in that. So what can you do? Well, in the description box down below, we will put the link so that you know how to contact your legislator and how to reach out to them and make productive and meaningful comments. Or you could do what I've been telling you to do for a couple of months now, and that's just go ahead and sign up for the Conservative Ladies of Washington's Legislative Action Center. It is the best in the business. Not only does it give you live up to the minute updates on what's happening with every bill, whether it's firearm related or other things that you're concerned about, but it also gives you all the action items on what you can do to be personally involved in trying to stop some of this insanity. If you have any other questions about what we talked about or anything else related to what's left of your Second Amendment rights, you guys should know how to contact Washington Gun Law by now, but if you don't, all of that's in the description box down below. In the meantime, I want all of you to remember that part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Law, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching, and stay safe.